Hello and welcome. My name is Bridget Bogner. In this training, we will be looking at the three key factors in employee retention and ensuring an enthusiastic workforce. These factors are as follows. Appreciate, motivate, and reward. Our objectives for this training are to understand appreciation and its relation to motivation, to implement motivational games to increase productivity, and finally, to reap the rewards for both the business and the employees. First, we will look at the seven things to motivate and retain your employees. Number one. Be generous with your recognition. People need to know they are appreciated. Do not hesitate to give a compliment for work well done. Point out what they did correctly to assure they will repeat this behavior. Far too many times, employers will point out mistakes and forget to highlight the positives. A pat on the back instills pride in the employee and their work. Number two, give team members responsibility. It gives them a sense of ownership and with that, pride. Assigning additional tasks to employees gives them a sense of importance. In exchange, it also shows management what abilities the employee has, their determination to go above and beyond, and displays which employees would be a good fit for promotions when positions become available. Number three, make your ideas theirs. Don't tell them how to do it, but instead, Say, do you think it's a good idea if we do it this way? When employees are allowed to verbalize their ideas or opinions, it makes them feel important. It also puts the responsibility of completing the task in their court. Finally, it can bring forth new ideas that may streamline workflow in the future. It can also show strengths of that employee. Number four, help them learn. Instead of reprimanding, try saying, do you have any ideas on how you could do this task differently? Reprimanding does nothing more than bring around negative feelings. Reprimand should only be used as a last resort. Involving the employee in the re resolution of an issue puts ownership of the problem on their shoulders. Plus, the resolution fits their learning patterns. This means it's more likely that the behavior will be corrected. Number five, put people in charge of their quotas. Have them forecast their goals, reminding them they should always be improving. Employees know their strengths and what they are capable of. This is especially true at the beginning of a new position. When employees are bogged down with the stress of meeting quotas, they will not perform at their highest ability. Having an employee set their quotas and increase them with their experience puts them in charge of their output. If they fail to meet them, it opens up discussion on what they feel they need to improve on. When they are met, it is an extreme confidence builder. As goals are met, the quota must be increased. This also sets a benchmark of what they are capable of and makes setting new quotas easier. Number six, give out awards along with your recognition. Award them as a team, such as buying pizza, or individually, such as a sales rep of the month. When the whole team reaches a goal, they should be awarded as a team. This can be done with gift cards when working remotely or a pizza party when working as a business. Also, awarding individual employees when they go above and beyond our expectations can inspire the other employees to follow their example. Number seven, make it personal. Get to know your team members, ask about family and interests, and let them know you care. I can't stress enough the importance of this last item. Getting to know your employees and showing interest in their lives increases employee retention and makes them feel valued. As an employer, it lets you know what drives and motivates the employee. It allows the employer to know how to reward the employee with something meaningful. Adaptable team games. With a little ingenuity, 
These games can be adapted to almost any situation, including remotely. Game 1. Pass the buck. The first person to get a sale or reach a goal is handed $20. When the next person makes a sale or achieves a goal, they pass the money to them. This continues till the end of the day or shift, and the person holding the money keeps it. It can also be adapted by meeting deadlines and completing added tasks, and in a remote situation, the money could be virtually sent through email or chat. Game number two, digging for dollars. A jar is filled with dollar bills. When an employee upsells or reaches a goal, they get to take a dollar. They compete to see who can collect the most dollars while giving everyone a chance to be a winner. The game ends when all dollars are dispersed. At the end of the day, they keep the money they collected. Remotely, it could be started with a virtual pot and dollars are doled out virtually to employees until all funds have been exhausted. This could be administered as a bonus on the check or as virtual gift cards to places of their choosing. Number three, tic-tac-toe or bingo. For businesses with multiple sales goals or KPIs, these games work great. Use tic-tac-toe for under 10 goals and bingo for more. Place a goal in each square. Every time an employee reaches a goal, they mark a space. Arrange the squares differently on the boards. Have the employee put their name on it and display it in an office or break room. The first one to get a row wins first place. Prizes could be could include cash, gift card, or even a scheduled variance such as longer lunch or an extra break. It can, can again be adapted with goals that pertain to the positions that are playing. The cards could be sent to each player through email when in a remote setting. The administrator of the game would have access to each person's playing card, so when a bingo or tic-tac-toe is called, it could be easily verified. In the end, what are the rewards? Appreciation. Your employees feel appreciated, empowered, and part of the company. This motivates the employees to want to see the business grow. Your employees are excited to work because they feel like part of a family. This in turn means fewer absences for your team and a lower turnover rate. Number two, business growth. It is a win-win for everyone. The business sees increased revenue or increased productivity. Meanwhile, the employees go home with something extra. Most importantly, a sense of pride. And three, personalization. Remember, you weren't always the boss and many still have a boss. Put yourself in their shoes. What did you want? What would you like now as an employee? The things you wanted back then and the things you want now are not going to be much different from what your employees want. Remember, employees have families and that must be respected. Think of it this way. When they no longer have a job, the only thing some of them have is their family. I hope you have found this presentation to be beneficial and motivational to you as a boss. I hope you will use what you have learned to improve morale, employee enthusiasm, and employee retention. I thank you for your time. Have a positive day.